For decades, the soybean meal used in livestock feed was evaluated by the percentage of protein it contained. The higher the protein, the more the soy meal was valued as a way to grow healthy, strong livestock. So when studies pinpointed a slight but notable decline in U.S. soybean protein levels, eight-tenths of one percent over 30 years to 34.3 percent, some livestock nutrition experts and plant breeders became concerned. Well, the decline uh, we see in uh, protein concentration in soybeans and in soybean meal is a pretty big deal because it reduces the value. And you have to remember pigs and poultry, they consume more than 75% of all the soybean meal that, that is uh, produced in the world. Jeff Thompson, a research lead for North American soybeans at Corteva AgriSciences in Johnston, Iowa, points out that as yields have increased, the amount of protein produced per acre has actually grown. But he understands how the dip in the percentage in each bushel is problematic for livestock producers. So as protein concentrations go down, the more soybeans need to be crushed, um, and, the, uh, and, and that, cha that alters the feed rations for, for poultry and, and swine in, in particular. That rate of decline has been slightly greater than the rate of decline, say, in Brazil. And the reason for that is, uh, is temperature is also a, a component. So when temperatures are decreased, especially during um, seed development and maturity, protein levels tend to go down. While most of the expansion of soybean planting in recent decades has been to cooler climates of the northern U.S., the bulk of expansion in South America has been to warmer regions. U.S. industry leaders acknowledge the lower protein levels could mean the loss of market share. For row crop farmers, there is no direct financial incentive to focus on the amount of protein. When taking their soybeans to the grain elevator, farmers are generally paid solely on the number of bushels they bring in. You got to look at what uh, is going to return for what I'm paying for the seed, what I think will be the best for my uh, for my ground and for my for my acres. That's our bottom line to see if we're going to you know, be above or below the, the profit line. The two traits tend to have an inverse relationship. As yield increases, protein tends to decline. A soybean checkoff funded study suggests farmers could earn an additional $7.70 to $12.96 per acre if they increased protein levels by 1%. In the 21st century, as we've gotten so good at our technology and, and what our expertise that we can do, that we should be looking a little bit deeper as to actually what the meal needs to do for whatever we're feeding it to. Researchers and animal nutritionists are taking a deep dive inside the soybean and examining essential amino acids, which generally increase as protein percentages move higher. Animals are unable to make these amino acids on their own and must consume them to grow. A debate has arisen over whether the increase in the essential amino acids, lysine and methionine among them, slow a bit once a protein moves beyond a certain percentage. This is a hotly contested subject, this whole, this whole thing about are U.S. soybeans high enough in protein? Can we compete with South American soybeans? Are northern United States soybeans high enough in protein to compete with southern United States protein? Um, but again, these new studies and these studies that are going to continue to really look at is, is it all about total protein, crude protein levels, or is it about analyzing and determining the, the right amino acid balance? Some are already advocating that soybeans should be marketed by amino acid levels rather than overall protein. My bias, based on the data I've seen and based on my understanding of, of the biochemistry, I think we're going to migrate rather quickly towards analyzing soybeans and the meal from soybeans at the amino acid level rather than the total crude protein level. Internationally, you know, I've been on some trade mission, educational missions, you know, and that's the first thing that's always thrown up to uh, U.S. producers is that our our soy, our protein is just a little bit less than that might be from South America or from other sources. And so it's a hurdle to get over to having to talk about something besides protein as far as the value of what they're buying. 
Stein says this may change. Synthetic amino acids are becoming more commonly used in both Asia and the U.S., threatening soybean meal's position in feeding livestock. Feed companies and the integrators, they can purchase individual amino acids in more and more of them, which means that they need less and less soybean meal. And so I think that's the biggest competitor. It would take the entire industry, uh, and, but, but the crushers more than anyone else, to change how they pay the producers for their soybeans. So if a producer is uh, rewarded for delivering high amino acid beans, then the, the producers would uh, start changing and start selecting those high amino acid beans from the, from the breeders. At Corteva, where it takes seven years to develop and release a new soybean variety, researchers are focused on yield first and disease and pest resistance second. However, they are not discounting the need to watch protein percentages. We in the research community uh, really need to strike a balance between, um, between protein concentrations and yield. And what, uh, what our goal could be would be to stabilize the, uh, the decline in, in protein concentrations while continuing to improve, uh, improve yields. That would be a way that we could benefit both, both the animal agriculture industry and our farmer customers. From Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.